So, um, how many of you are new to Tableau? Everybody's okay. Um, Tableau is just drag and drop, just like you have used pivot tables before in Excel. It's kind of the same idea. You've got kind of rows and columns, and you just build pivot tables, but it builds pretty pictures instead. And it's uh, just more fun. Uh, so I'm going to just build. Um, I've, cr I've created a whole list of charts I'm going to build so I don't forget what I wanted to build. But um, you ready? OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is just build a simple bar chart of sales by product subcategory. So I'm going to take product subcategory and put that on the rows. And I'm going to take sales and put that on the columns. And I get something nice and simple like that. And I can just sort it by clicking on the little sort button. Right? Very, very easy. So if I then want to, uh, let me duplicate that. Let's say that I want to filter this down. And instead, actually, this time, let me go back. Sorry. Let's look at a slightly different example here now. We've got a list of products. And we want to know the sales for all of our products. So this is kind of the lowest level that we have in our data set. And hope, I know the, the, the font's a bit small, but and let's say that we want to look at just the top 10 products. Or maybe we want to do even better than that. We want to let the user pick how many they want to see. So to do that, I could just filter on my product name. And on this filter screen, I'm going to start by choosing Use All. And I'm going to go over here to this top option. Can you see that OK on the screen? Maybe if I zoom in a bit. And I can just do top 10 by sales, something like that. Very easy. Hit OK. And there we go. I've got my top 10. But I may want to allow the user to configure that number, right? So when I publish this, I want my user to have an option to just type a number in for how many they want to see. So I'm going to go back into my filter. And here in the top option, where I have 10 here, I'm just going to choose create a parameter. I'm going to do it. I'm going to say, I'm just going to call it top n. And just let the user pick. I'm just going to leave everything else as defaults. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And I'm going to get a nice little box over here. And I can just slide this over. And I got a nice little option there. Right? Very simple. But um, what I want to do now is, I, let's say I want to look at maybe the top, uh, maybe the top five. Whoops, let me go down here. So top seven, whatever. Uh, within each region. So if I drag region into the rows, so I want to see, by region, I want to see the top seven. Well, notice what happens here. In this particular section, see how it says I've only got six Six, oops, when I, let me do that again. When I hope, did it again. Okay, you see how it says six items there, right? That's because what Tableau is doing is this is the same six products listed within each region. So uh, basically what Tableau is doing in this case is it's saying just give me the top seven overall and just show me each of those within the, within the region. So if I want the region to be applied first and I want the top seven within each region, what I have to do is I have to filter region. I'm going to choose use all here. I'm just going to hit OK. But then I'm going to add this to context. And what that does, in theory, it should work. It didn't work. Uh, what did I do wrong? Did I get the same list again? OK, let me do it this way. So let me show the filter. And let's say I want to look at just the central region now. And now I have a different list of seven. So this is showing me, so let me just take region out of the view. And if I go back to all, I get my top seven or top 10, whatever it is, top 15, top 20. This is now looking at my top 20 across all regions. As soon as I start filtering, so let me take region back off the, uh, let me make it a regular filter again, take it back out of context. And as soon as I start filtering down, you see my list is changing, but now once I get down to the west, I'm down to 19 marks, right? So when I filter, I want the filter to be applied first, and then I want to get the top 20. So in other words, within the, let's see, let's pick a different region, see if we get a smaller number. So the central, for example, I've got 18 marks. I can see that down here on the bottom. I can see how many rows I have, really small. So I know that I've got my, even though it's, my, it's looking at my top 20 overall and then filtering down to the region. What I want is I wanted to filter the region first and then give me the top 20 within the central. So that's where the context comes in. So I go here and I choose add to context. And that makes Tableau apply that filter first before it does your top and bottom filter. OK, so I'll call this top end with context. And I'll publish this workbook, too, so you can download it from Tableau Public later. Um, how about stacked bars? So in this case, let's say we want to look at, um, I want to look at maybe by month and year, I want to look at sales. But let's do, actually, let's do it a bit different. Let's do year and quarter, something like that. I'm going to make these bars. 
and I want to split this up by region. Right? So that's how you can do stacked bars. Really, really easy. You just drag something onto color. But to me, these have a bit more context if I make it a percent of total stacked bar. So let me delete this sheet. I just have it there so I remember what to do. Um, I'm going to duplicate this sheet. Give it a new name. And this time, what I want to do is I want to show these as a percent of total. So everything should add up to 100% as I go across. So to do that, I'm going to go into this. I'm going to right click on sales, go down a quick table calc, and tell it to do it by percent of total. Now, it didn't look like it changed anything because it's actually doing, when I go down here and I look at compute using, it's going across the table. So in other words, if I highlight the central region, um, I'll get, uh, so I get 100% for the central, I get 100% there. So it's actually, or no, I'm sorry, it's doing 100% across the entire table. What I wanted to do is I wanted to do it down the table. So I'm gonna go here to compute using table down, and now I get a nice little view like that instead. So that'd be your percent of total stack bar. Okay, now earlier I showed you guys kind of some bars inside of bars. Remember my upper left chart for Coca-Cola had the red bar inside of the gray bar? So how will we do something like that? So let's look at it again by quarter. So I'm gonna start quarter, and let me just make this discrete. And let's say we wanna look at sales. So I've got sales by quarter, I'm gonna make these bars. Um, actually, no, let me make this uh, just regular quarters or months. Sorry, I'm, you can tell I'm doing this on the fly, right? And I wanna basically compare the last two years in my data set. So I'm gonna drag order date to the filters. I'm gonna filter to just 2014 and 15 because those are the latest two in my data set and hit okay. And then I'm gonna take a uh, year and I'm gonna put that on to color. So now it's splitting them up, but what it's doing is it's actually stacking them on top of each other. I want 2015 inside of 2014. Does that make sense? Because I'm kind of gonna kind of show a progress, right? So to do that, the first thing I have to do is go through the analysis menu and turn off my stacked marks. Now what that's doing is it's basically piling, piling them on top of each other. They both start at zero now, which is good. So now the trick is to make one fatter than the other, or one skinnier than the other. So I'm gonna duplicate year onto the size shelf, and there we go. So now, but my colors are reversed in this case. So I want the skinny bar to be 2015, and I want the fat bar to be 2014. So to do that, all I have to do is just rearrange these on the color shelf, if I can do it right. And there we go, now I've got one inside the other. So a nice little progress bar. All right, how about lollipops? Everybody likes candy, so um, let's say we want to just do a chart that is sales by subcategory. And I'll set that to entire view and maybe sort it down. But I want these to look like lollipops, right? <laughs> so to do that, I'm going to duplicate my sales field over here. And I'm going to make this one circles. I'm going to go back to this one, make this one, force it to be bars. So now I make a lollipop, all I do is make a dual axis and synchronize. And now just play around with my size shelf. So I want to make my bars nice and skinny. I'm going to make my circles nice and fat. And there we go. I've got a nice little lollipop chart. People love these for some reason. But. <laughs> and then I would probably just go ahead and hide one of the headers so that it looks a bit, it looks a bit cleaner. So how about a barbell chart? Okay, so for this example, I pre-filtered my, this is world indicators. This is like uh, just data about different countries around the world. This comes packaged with Tableau as well, but I pre-filtered it to 2012. And let's say that for each country, I want to compare the male and female population, or, or life expectancy, sorry, for males and females. So I'm going to drag females on to, this is the average life expectancy uh, for females. And I'm going to take males, and I'm going to drop that on top of this axis. And notice how it turns it into two green rulers. So that's going to create what's called a combined axis. So I do that, and now my green field up here on the rows, I'm sorry, on the columns change to measure values. So what I really want to do is I want to make these dots, and then I want to connect them with a line to make it look like a barbell, you know, like you're bench pressing. No, you get it? You get it? No? Okay. Uh, so uh, I'm going to take measure names, and I'm going to move that to the color, and I'm going to change these to circles. So I've got kind of the start of my barbell, right? And let me go ahead and... Uh, we know we don't have any zero ages, so I'm just going to uncheck the include zero there. And now to make it, to get the barbell part, I'm going to just duplicate measure values. And then on my second measure value shelf, I'm going to make this a line. And notice how it looks all funky, right? It's going kind of down the view. I want my line to go across. 
So I'm just going to take measure names and move that to the path shelf. And then all I have to do is just make this dual axis and synchronize and move these to the back. And there we go. I've got a nice little barbell chart. So I like these. People like these as well. So, uh, And if I wanted to, I could, maybe I want to sort these by, uh, in descending order, by maybe uh, life expectancy for females. So I can see which country is first. And then if I make it, there's probably too many countries. But if I do something, oh, wow, that looks kind of funky. So too much to show there. Like maybe I filter to a particular, what's everybody's favorite region? Definitely Europe, <laughs> uh, since we're here. And now if I make a fit entire view, it might look a bit better. There we go. So we can see which country has the highest life expectancy for females, and that's France. Italy's second, really. But a big gap between the men and the women. So the men in Italy is 80, and the women is 86. So. Maybe the women are killing the men slowly. <laughs> <laughs> is that more right? Probably. Yeah. Uh, no comments for the no. men. Uh, okay. So line charts. This is where this is kind of uh, one of Tableau's strengths here. So let's say I just want to look at sales and I want to look at sales over time. All I have to do is double click on a measure, double click on my date dimension, and I get lines. Now let's say I want to look at this by months. So I'm just going to change that to my continuous months, and there we go. Really, really simple. So we can extend that by maybe looking at, let's say, uh, let me just create that again. And this time I'm going to right click and drag order date and pick a uh, month. Or let's just do it by quarter to make it a bit smaller. So we get something like that. But I might want to break this out by maybe region. So I can put region up there in the columns. And maybe by my, uh, where's my segment, customer segment. Now I've got a series of small multiple line charts. So I can go ahead and maybe stick the label on the end of each line so I can see what the most recent sales is. And then I could even throw a trend line on there. So let me go to my trend line, stick that on there, and I can see which ones are increasing and decreasing. So a real easy small multiple view. In this case, I would probably put either region or customer segment on color. So if I do region on color, you'll see I get a different color in each panel going down. So uh, what are some other ways we could visualize time? So let's take order date there, put sales here. And the typical way of looking at, at um, dates is kind of by month and year, something like this, right? So let's fit entire view. And usually, oops, wrong field, like that. OK, so this is a typical way to look at it by month and year. But perhaps you, you can flip the, because we're looking at the parts of the date, so Tableau has split the data by the years and the months. Well, there's nothing wrong with looking at it by month and year. And that gives you a totally different story then. So now you're looking at within each month, how is it, what's the year over year change, right? Something like that. And from there, I could even do something like maybe I want to know what's the change in my January since my first January, right? So I want to compare the beginning of the line to the end of the line. So to do that, I'm going to use a uh, percent difference calculation. And I'm going to say to make it compute using pane across. And now we can see uh, 2012, there's no value because I'm not comparing anything to 2012. And I can see sort of, this might make a bit more sense if I make it bars, I can see the change across the years compared to 2012. So lots of easy ways to do that. Um, and I think I just did the same thing. Okay, so in this case, uh, let's do something a bit different. Let's look at maybe continuous months. And let's look at our profit this time because I'm tired of sales. And I could do the same thing. So I could do a quick table calculation that is the percent difference from the beginning. So I want to know how every month compares to the first month. So relative to the first, and we get something like that. You know, nothing particularly complicated, but a pretty simple view to create. So that's kind of some of the power of table calculations. Um, with time-based data sources, we could also predict sales. So if I want to look at, let's again go down to months. And let's say I want, to, I want to throw a forecast on here because I want to see what my projected sales are going to be. I can go to the analytics pane and just drag on a forecast. And there we go. We have a nice little forecast. It's not really very good. So I'm going to edit that forecast. And maybe I'll make it, um, let's make it custom. And let's make it additive and additive. And I think, there we go. So now we get something that looks a bit more. And it gives me confidence bands. If I want to turn those off, I can just hit this little check mark. And there it goes like that. And I can also say, you know what, I want it for the next three years. And then it gives me a forecast over the next three years. And there you go. Very, very simple. 
Um, so area charts. So uh, okay. So let's look at maybe sales by quarter. And this is very similar to creating a stacked bar chart. So if I want to look at my sales by region, I could just drag region on the color, but this is kind of messy. It's a bit hard to see. So what I would do is maybe change this into an area chart, and it doesn't really make it that much better because the only thing that's useful about this kind of area chart is you can read the pattern for the green one at the bottom, and you can read the pattern for the very top, but the very top represents the total. It doesn't represent just the blue, right? So uh, again, this is where I might, I might use a percent of total calculation to make it look, uh, so that's your area. And then let me duplicate this. And you can see how I put these in here. Delete. Ah, sorry. I put some placeholders in here so I wouldn't forget what to do. So in this case, again, we would do a percent of total calculation. And we would compute using table down. And now we see you know, kind of the contribution each one makes. So in this case, we can read the blue one pretty well, and we can read the green one pretty well, but the blue one is really good if you just turn your head upside down and read it that way, then it's a bit easier to read. So, um, and this is, a, this is one of my favorites. So I like to sometimes kind of shade uh, an area chart. So let me again do quarterly sales. And I'm just gonna make this an area chart. So something like that, very simple. Um, but what I'll do then is uh, sometimes I want to put a line across the top. So I could turn on my borders. So I could go here and turn on my, uh, maybe put a black border on. But notice what Tableau does is it puts a border all the way around the whole chart, which looks kind of ugly to me. I wish it would just put a border across the top. So I'm going to undo that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take sales and put it on the dual axis and synchronize. But on this axis, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to a line. And then I could maybe even show my little markers on there. Where's my oops, wrong shelf? Go here and I can even show my little markers. And now I've got a nice little line. I could even make it a bit fatter if I want, you know, to make it stand out a bit more, something like that. So that's how you can kind of shade the top of, uh, put a line on top of an area chart. Okay, what was I going to do here about the plot? Oh, okay. So. Again, let's look at, I know you're kind of tired of this by now, but I'm going to keep showing it to you anyway. Uh, so in this case, we want to look at uh, sales by quarter. I'm going to make it dots instead. And uh, I want to look at how each of my maybe customer segments, so I'm going to put those on color. And now the reason you would create a dot plot like this is because you're, wanting, you're not wanting to look at the pattern of the colors. You're wanting to kind of compare within each uh, quarter. So, uh, but sometimes what I'll do is instead of just having that, I'll also put a second one on here and I'll remove customer segment and I'll make this one align. And then when I dual access this, I can kind of see the overall pattern. If I synchronize it, I can see the overall <coughs> pattern as well as the contribution that each segment makes to that quarter. So that's a good way to combine a dot plot and a, uh, and a line chart. Okay, how about running totals? These are really fancy. So I'm going to look at sales by month, by region. And we get something like that. And we get the ugly chart that we don't like. But I want to know over time how much is, uh, you basically think of them in like a horse race. You know, you're trying to see which one is, is uh, in first place at the end. So this is another quick table calculation. Just make it a running total. And there we go. Very, very simple. I can just, and I can maybe throw my labels on the end. Oops, the line, or most recent, do that. And now we get nice little labels on the end. If I also want to have region on the label, so this tells me the value, so I can drag that onto there. If I also want region onto label, I can do that. And now I can rearrange these, and I can have the region, and maybe I match the color. And I can see, uh, now I don't need my legend anymore, and I save a bit of space within my dashboard. Um, do, are you guys familiar with spark lines? Have you heard of the term spark lines before? They're what you see when you look at stock charts, basically. They're kind of like micro-sized charts. So how will we build those? So again, I'm going to look at order date, because we're not tired of it yet. Uh, and let's say we, let's just do quarter, and let's look at, oh, let's look at profit this time. And we want to look at it by product category. So I get something like that, and maybe I'll put product category on color as well. Oops. 
So we've got a little chart like that. And to make it a, a um, all right, let me zoom this in a bit more. Okay, there we go, we've got months. So to make it a, um, a spark line, what you do is you just kind of grab this edge over here on the side and just shrink it down. And you grab this one and you shrink it down. But the trick here is each of these need to be viewed independently. So right now, if you'll notice, they're all on the same scale, zero to 40,000. You really want those scales to be independent of each other. You want them to fill up the space because you're trying to, you're not really trying to compare them. You're trying to look across and not down. So I'm going to double click on my axis. I'm going to untick the include zero option and I'm going to make them independent right here in the middle. Hit OK. And then from there, I just like to, un, un, uh, to hide that header and I can even make these a bit smaller if I want and do something like that. So those are how you make spark lines. Um, OK. A hockey stick chart. Do you guys know what a hockey stick chart is? This would be like the fastest growing products, something like that. So if I look at um, how many products do we have? We have 1,263 products. I'm going to try to do 1,263 products on one view. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a calculated field. I'm going to say day of first sale. And is it big enough on the screen? Yeah. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to use a level of detail expression here. I'm going to say, I'm going to fix this at the product, uh, product name level. So I'm basically saying for each product name, I want to get the min order date. So when was my first order for each product? OK, so that gives me the same date for every product. So if I drag this into the view, and let me just put it here. And let's look at the discrete dates. We can see a single date for each product, right? So that's when each of those products started. But what I want to know is which one is growing the fastest. So I need to create another field that's days since first sale. And this is going to be a date add calculation. And I want to do it at the day level. And my interval is going to be, uh, I'm using the wrong field. This should be a date diff. Sorry about that. And I'm going to do it at the day level. My start date is going to be the first date the product was purchased, so day of first sale. And I want to compare that to my order date. Hit OK. And I can take this off the view now. And it made it a measure, but I'm going to make it a dimension, and I'm going to make it continuous. And OK. So we got something like that. And now I can take product name and put that on detail and put sales on rows. And now when I make this a running total, I can see which products are growing the fastest. So if I wanted this to be just for a particular, maybe I'll filter it down a bit to a particular, uh, let's do technology. We can see of all the technology products, these are the ones that grew the fastest. So we can see up here that uh, this is 2005, uh, 255,304. But maybe I want to be even fancier and I want to know Okay, so we know what their total sales is, but I want to know how long did it, what, uh, at what point did they reach 80% of their sales? So I want them all to kind of add up to 100%. So like a Pareto chart kind of view. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to edit my table calculation. And what I'm going to do is right now it's doing uh, running total across the view. So this is saying for each product, calculate the running total by product. And now I'm going to add a secondary calculation, which is my percent of total. So first I count the running total, and then I calculate the percent of total. And I'm going to say, um, I'm going to just set it up the same way. And there we go. So now I can see how long it took each product to get to 100% of its sales. So some of these products, like this one here, it only sold twice, so it's not really that meaningful. Uh, but some of these took a long time to get up to 100% of sales. So it took 1,456 days to get to 100% of its sales. So lots of different ways that you can manipulate these views. Um, okay, this was a fun one that I learned recently from um, one of my new data schoolers. So in this particular example, I'm going to again, because I know you're not tired of it yet, I'm just going to look at sales by quarter. And when I go onto the label shelf here, I can choose show mark labels and that shows me every single point. Uh, or I can do most recent and that'll, that'll give me um, a spot on the end there. And what I like about the most recent option is it gives me this little circle here as well. You see that nice little circle that sticks on the end? I really like that. But really what I want is I want a circle on either end, right? A little dot like that on either end. So if I do line ends, 
and I say, okay, give me labels on the start and the end, my little dots go away, which is super annoying. So the way to get around that is you click on the label shelf and you make it min max instead. And you tell it to calculate the min and the maximum based on your date field. And now you get the little dots on the end. Now, it labeled it based on the quarter, so all I have to do is put sales onto the label and I get the, that instead. So this is really useful if you just want to kind of see the beginning and the end of each of those. Okay, but maybe what I want to do here is, let me duplicate this sheet, and I'm going to make this uh, discrete. Uh, oh, okay, so now I need to fix this again, sorry. So let's do quarter, okay, and I want to look at it for each region, for example. Okay, so now I've got a line for each region. It's not particularly pretty, but all I really care about is what's the change from the beginning to the end. So I want to create a slope graph. Have you guys seen slope graphs before? They're just kind of like really simple lines that have a start and an end, and we basically get rid of everything else in the middle. So the easy way to do that in this case is I'm just going to highlight all of these dates in the middle and choose to exclude them. And now I have, when I mouse over, I've got a nice little slope graph. That's it. Super simple, right? Almost too easy. Uh, so let me call this slope. I hate pie charts, but I'm going to show you how to do them anyway because I like donuts better. So I like starting <laughs> donuts with pies. So to do this one, I'm going to change my mark type to, <coughs> to pie. And I'm going to, let's say we want to look at it by, uh, I don't know, maybe by region. So I'm going to put region on color, and I'm going to look at sales on the angle. So that tells me the contribution that each one makes. So if I can do fit entire view, and I get something like that, and maybe show my labels, okay? So that's a really simple pie. Um, actually, let's do it a bit different. Let's take, let's look at just the last two years. Uh, that would be a better way to do this. No, let's not do it that way. Let's, let's filter down to just two regions. The central, or no, uh, Nico showed how to create a group earlier. So let's say, we want, let's say we want to do the central compared to everybody else. So I'm gonna highlight these three and create a group. And I'll just call this uh, all others. Something like that. And I'm going to reverse these because I want central to be first. Okay? So that gives me a nice little donut chart, or a nice little pie chart. Not too bad. Two slices isn't too bad. Um, I would probably actually change this to be a percent of total because it makes it a bit easier to read. Right? It makes It's hard to know what contribution one point or 4.7 million is out of 15 unless you're really good at math in your head. So I'd make it a contribution like that. Okay, so we want to do something similar, but we want to make it, a, we basically want to punch a hole in this to make it a donut, right? Um, so a donut is like um, a pie with some wasted parts. Um, so I'm going to start by creating, a, by recreating my pie chart. So where's my segment? So put that on color. And I'm going to look at sales on the angle again. And let me just rearrange these. So now to make this a donut, what I need to do is I need to stick a fake axis in here. So I'm just going to double click in the axis and choose the average and just type in the average of zero because I know I need to make it a dual axis chart. So let me make the pie bigger so you can see it. Okay, something like that. And then I'm going to duplicate this field. I just hold my control key down to duplicate it. And on this one, I just want to make it a circle. And here, uh, I'm going to take region off, I'm going to take sales off, and I'm just going to make it white. And now, if I make this a dual axis chart and synchronize, now all I need to do is go to my circle and just make it a bit smaller. And now I've got a nice little donut chart. So everybody likes donuts, right? <laughs> People love these on, on dashboards as well. Okay, how about distributions? So um, I think I have a data set here. So let's say we want to look at, oh, that's really depressing, infant mortality rates. Um, uh, how about mobile phone usage? So for any kind of measure, we can, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna create what are called bins. So I'm gonna right click on mobile phone usage and choose create bins. This is a great way to show distributions. I'm just, for now, I'm just gonna let Tableau default it. And you'll see I get this new little mark type up here that looks like a histogram. So for that, I'm gonna put mobile, I'm gonna put mobile phone usage across. I'm gonna just go ahead and exclude the nulls. And then what I'm gonna do is I wanna count the countries that fall into each bin. So I'm gonna right click and drag country up to the rows and make it account the state. 
and maybe let's filter down to the most recent year. So year 2012, there we go. And now we can see a nice little distribution of mobile phone usage, uh, the number of countries that fall into each of these. So now that that's account distinct, I would probably make it a percent of total and then go ahead and throw the labels on. So now I can see, uh, let's turn the alignment this way so we can read it a bit better. Well, that didn't work so well, did it? Okay, it should have rotated them, but just turn your head sideways and you can pretend, or you can just flip it that way. Um, so that's a neat way to do distributions. And then you can, if I don't like the size of these bins, I can always edit my, my bin here. And let's say I want to do it instead of every 0.084, I want it to be every 0.02, something like that. And now I get more bands. So you can kind of play around with the different, the different uh, size of the bands that you want. It's really effective for looking at things like age distributions of customers and things like that. Um, all right, maps are super simple. These are really fun. Everybody loves maps. Whenever we do Makeover Monday, if there's a geographic field, somebody will create a map, whether it's useful or not, because you can. So I'm just going to double click on states. So anything with a little geographic, a little globe next to it, well, you, Tableau can automatically create a map. So I'm going to double click on state. And notice how I get this little indicator down here that says 48 unknown. That's because the default country for my computer is United <laughs> Kingdom. This is in the US. So if you see this indicator and the map doesn't pop up, you can just click on that indicator and choose edit locations. And then you can go up here and just change the country. So I'm gonna just going to call it United States. Oops, wrong one. And it'll recognize those states. And now I should get a map. And I can maybe just stick profit on color or something like that. Super, super simple. All right. So um, another thing you might want to do is let's look at states again. Let's put sales on the size so we can see you know, how they compare to each other, which, is, which can be useful. Um, but another thing that's more useful is, yeah, yeah, it looks like California and Texas and maybe Illinois have the three highest sales, but are they profitable? So I can drag profit to color, and now I can see, yes, they are profitable. I've got one state that's not. Or I could even, I could even make this a series of small multiple maps. So I could take, for example, my customer segment and put that in the columns. I probably should make these a bit smaller, I guess, now, huh? Something like that. And then I can maybe take my product category and put it down here. And now I get a series of maps, and I can kind of visually slice and dice it lots of different ways. So I can see I've got a problem here. California overall is profitable, but now I see I've got a problem in the consumer segment in technology where we're losing money. All right. So if you'll also notice, our region field here is not geographic. So, um, but let's say that I want to have a regional map, right? So I can maybe I'll put profit back on color. And instead of having it by state, I want to have a map by region. So to do that, I can right click on the region field and go down to geographic role. And I can tell it to create regions based on another field. So I know I have a hierarchy, so states are all assigned a single region. They don't span regions. So I could choose to create it from state. And now I have a new field called region. I could put that on there. And there we go. Now I can see my profit by region instead. Or I can notice how it also took the, that custom region that I created, and I could use that instead. So I've got the central versus everybody else. So it, it kind of learns it both directions. All right, everybody loves maps. Um, so how would we, uh, so I have a data set that is every single London bus route. So there are thousands, it seems like thousands of buses in London. I guess most of you have probably been to London at one time or another. Yeah, lots of buses everywhere. I love taking the bus, best way to see the city. So, but the problem is I have a series of routes and each route has a, has a, you know, a series of bus stops, the names of the bus stops. So I'm gonna add them all. And then each of those are in a sequence, right? So for route one, this is the sequence of the bus stops. But what I wanna do is I basically wanna draw that route on a map, right? So for each of these bus stops, I have the geographic fields. So you see here I've got latitude and longitude, so I'm just gonna double click on those. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the route on detail because I want, you know, so right now what this is showing me is the centroid for all of the, all of the bus stops for each route. So if I wanna see each stop, I also have to put stop on detail, right? Something like that, and it comes, becomes really messy. It's starting to look like some kind of map, right? So let me shrink the size of this down, oops. 
Okay, I did. That's weird. Okay. So, but it's still not quite right because it's not connect. It's not playing the game of connect the dots, right? So I'm going to change my mark type to a line, and now I get something that looks like a willow tree or something a really sad tree. Uh, but I need to basically tell Tableau how should you connect the dots. For, so for each route, what field determines the order of the buses? Anybody remember? Sequence, sequence, right. So I'm going to take sequence and put that on this path shelf. And now I get a nice, uh, let me take stop name back off, and there we go. Now I've got a nice little uh, map of London bus routes. But I don't like these maps in the background. So I keep a list of map box maps, so I'm going to just copy this one that I have here. And I can go up here to map, background maps, and choose map services. And I'm going to add a Mapbox map. And I'm going to call this Scenic, because that's what Mapbox calls it. And I just paste that URL in. And now I've got a much nicer background map, hopefully, if, if the internet works. There we go. So now I've got a much prettier background map to use. And uh, I could even, you know, now I could go ahead and uh, maybe show the highlighter for the route. And I take the R68 a lot, so I can see what the route is for the R68. Or the uh, 26, I think is, oh, that one goes all over the place. Oh, no. So that's, you see what Tableau is doing there. It's finding all routes that have the number 26 in it. So if I want just the 26, that one goes from Waterloo to the data school. So <coughs> that's one I've taken before as well. And you can kind of play with it that way. So nice, beautiful little maps. So you can do all kinds of different backgrounds. All right, uh, the next thing we want to look at is scatter plots. So let's say we want to look at um, female population compared to male population by country. So let's put that on detail. And we get something like that, like we would expect. Um, I could do kind of a Hans Rosling sort of thing. And if I make this a line, I could then take year and drag that onto the path shelf. So let's do continuous years. And now for each country, so if I uh, show the highlighter here, and let's pick a country, Americans, that's not working very well. Aruba, you can see how Aruba changed over the years. Let's filter it down to a particular region. That might get a bit easier to see. So let's look at Europe. And then I'm going to actually uh, un make both of these zoomed in a bit so we can see it a bit better. So now we can see for the countries that are in Europe, we can see kind of how they've changed over time, something like that. <coughs> if I want to animate that, I can just move year to the pages shelf and make these dots instead. And how about this time, what I'll do is I'll color them by country. And if I do show history and I tell it to show both the trails and the marks, then let me do something like that. Now it should play in theory. So we should be able to see it not work. It's great. Excellent work, Andy. Uh, so let me change this to years. This could, okay, there we go. So now let's try it. Let's see if it works. So something is not working here. Any hints, guys? Okay. Oh, it's it's got an error. Anyway, in theory that should work, but it didn't. Okay. So forget that. Um, but uh, another thing we might want to do is if I go back to my sample superstore and let's say I want to look at uh, profit versus sales by product. Detail. Let's put that on detail. Um, Tableau has a great clustering feature. I heard somebody mentoring, mentioned clustering earlier today. So I'm going to change these marks to just circles for now. And underneath the analytics pane, I can just add, uh, this does k-means clustering. And Tableau will automatically say, OK, your products naturally line up into these three clusters. So uh, you know, it looks like it's doing it based on sales. So you see it flipped the, so if I flip the axis, it might change them. Uh, no, it didn't. Um, but sometimes it does it based on what is the, what is the dependent and the independent axis. So that's clustering. Another thing that's really fun to do is um, let's say that I'm going to create a calculated field that's my 2014 sales. Wait, what years do we have in here? What 2014 and 2015, I think. So I'm going to say if my year of order date is equal to 2014, then I want sales. Uh, something like that. So that gives me a new measure for 2014 sales. And then I'm going to duplicate that and edit. And let's make this one 2015. 
And basically, I want to compare my year-over-year -year sales, right? So let's do 2015 sales. And let's say we want to look at it by product subcategory. Uh, that's not quite detailed enough. Let's look at it by product name. Okay, there we go. But what's really useful is to know, uh, let me make these circles. What can be useful is to, is to know, let's say we want to put a 45 degree line in here so we know which ones are above and below. So anything, uh, we should flip the axis probably. So anything above the axis means 2015 sold more than 2014. Does that make sense if you put a 45 degree line here? So to do that, I'm just going to duplicate either one of these fields from the rows and columns to the opposite, uh, opposite shelf. transparent and super small so nobody can really click on anything so it's there it's just kind of hiding and then I'm going to go up to my analytics pane and drag on a uh, trend line on my 2014 sales and now I've got a perfect 45 degree angle so here on this shelf I could then uh, easily say you know I could create a calculated field let me actually I need to fix these real quick I need to add an else zero Oops. I could spell else, that would help. And let me change this one as well. And now I could just do a simple calculation that's like uh, above or below. And I could just say the sum of 2015 uh, sale, sales 2015 is bigger than sum of sales 2014. Something like that. That's just going to return a Boolean, just a true or a false. It's either above or below. And now I can put that on my color shelf, and now I can easily see which ones are above or below. Super simple. Really, but it's at a glance, it makes it really easy to see kind of how many products are above and below the prior year. Okay. Do you want me to keep going? Yeah? Okay. Um, I love Pareto charts. Everybody know what the Pareto, Pareto principle is? That's what, 80% of your sales come from 20% of your products? Something like that, right? Do you want to do sales or profit? Any preference? Profit, sales, profit? Just for a change. Okay, just for a change, okay. So let's take, pro let's take product and put that into the columns. And I'm gonna take uh, profit and put that in the rows. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sort these in descending order. So my top products are first, I'll fit it. So I'm gonna squash it all in there, right? So some of them are profitable, some of them are not. So to make that a Pareto, I'm going to add a table calculation, and I'm going to do like I did for those line charts before. I'm going to first make it a running total, because I want to count across the products. So now I'm trying to look at how many products make up 80% of my sales. So uh, I'm going to do it like that. And then I'm going to add a secondary calculation, which is my, oh, oh boy, what happened there? Secondary. And I'm going to make this one a percent of total and also do it by product name. So now I can see which products make up 80% of my sales. So notice how it goes up higher because the net at the end is 100%. So that's why using profit might not quite work, right? Does that make sense why profit wouldn't work in this case? So because you, you can have negative profits, right? So let's, let's use sales instead and let's just do it one more time. So first off, I need to sort this, and then add a table calc. Oh, I could just start by doing a running total. And that should look a bit better. See, that looks a bit better already, right? And then I'm going to edit my table calc, make it on product name, and then do a secondary calculation. That's a percent of total by product name. There we go. So now I can see, you know, the where I could kind of find 80% around here somewhere, right? But what would be really nice, so I could throw a reference line on here, a uh, constant line at 0.8 to say when 80% of my products, you know, and I could kind of mouse over, but that doesn't help me count the number of products, right? Because I need to know how many products is it when I go left to right. So I'll, I'll leave this one like this for now, and I'm going to duplicate it. And what I need to do is I need to actually change the product. I need to count the number of products going left to right. So I'm going to duplicate product name onto the detail shelf. And then I'm going to make this a measure and make it a count distinct. 
Now, these are all going to become one, which is what you would expect because you're only counting each product one time. But we need, just need to perform that same calculation, a running total and then a percent of total. So let's first make it a running total. And now if I edit my table calc, I want to go by product name. Come on. And now I can make a secondary calculation. And you can tell it's getting slow now because it's doing all these calculations. A percent of total by product name. And now if I make this an area chart, it's a bit easier to see. And now I can drag on another reference line. Oops, not average, a constant line on my count of products at point two, and now I can kind of see it. So this doesn't quite fit the Pareto principle, right? So you're a bit below that. But if we, if I copy this down to the detail shelf, and then let me edit my table calc again and get rid of the secondary part. So now this is just counting the number of products as I go left to right. So when I hover over and I get to here, I can see about that point, 253 products, so right here, make up 76% of my sales, right? So it's an easy way to see it. And when I get to 80%, it looks like uh, 80.1, uh, 294 products, or 23% of my products make up 80% of my sales. So a really useful, useful chart type. All right. You guys like box plots? They're really fun. I like them. Okay. Actually, before I do the box plot, I'm going to show you jittering. So um, in this particular case, what I want to look at is this is, uh, this is global temperature data. Um, so I'm looking at the median temperature by month across all of the years. So something super messy like this. Yeah, so nothing particularly grand or exciting. Um, but really what I want to be able to do is um, I want to be able to look at the uh, all of these temperatures kind of together. I don't want to see these as lines. I want to see within January what are the different temperatures, right? So I could even, let me just use my date field instead. Let me make this month. So now we can see the names of the dates. So there's a hidden function in Tableau called random. So I'm just going to double click in my shelf here and type in random. Open and close brackets. Hit OK. And then if I make these dots, I can see kind of the distribution of all of my years, all of my Januaries. And then I could take the median and maybe put that on color, and I can see my, my temperature change uh, within January. So it looks like overall it's going kind of up and to the right. But what would be useful then, if I duplicate this, is I want to look at just the outliers. So if I want to look at just the outliers, I can, dra I can go over to my analytics pane and drag on a box plot and put that on my median and hit OK. And now I can see kind of, you know, where the median is for each of my box plots, right? So it looks like, you know, some of them are getting, you know, you've got a wider distribution in December than you do in November and things like that. But really all I care about is seeing the outliers. So if I go back into my box plot and edit it, there's this little option here called hide underlying marks. This option right here. When you click on that, it hides all of the dots that are underneath of the whiskers, and you can see all of the outliers. <laughs> so now maybe I move year to label, and I can see what years those are. And not surprisingly, they're all recent. Right? So global warming is not fake. Uh, except something happened in 1862. I think there were a lot of volcanoes or something that year. So I, forget, I forget what it is. I looked it up one time, but obviously it didn't stick. Um, so let's call that box plot. Okay, so how about a heat map? Um, so let's look at, uh, let's just do something really simple here. If I want to look at, for example, uh, maybe product subcategory, and I want to look at it by, uh, this might get a bit messy. I'll just do it like that anyway. That's okay. We're all friends. Uh, and I, want, I could just, if I want to just do a heat map, I could just drag it, and there we go. Nice, simple heat map. So a heat map is, I like to think of heat maps as scatter plots for dimensions. So if, the scatter, if I go back over to my scatter plot, we have two measures on the, on the x and the y. When you want to do a heat map, and I'm going to have to fix this one because that's really annoying. Um, when I do a heat map, it's kind of the same idea, except you have dimensions on your x and your y. So this shows me which states have the, you know, the largest profit across the different product categories, something like that. Another fun way to use heat maps is to build a calendar. 
So I'm going to start by just filtering down to a specific month and year. So let's pick, uh, I think it's November 2015, that works well. And then I can just go ahead and show this filter so that we can then slide through these. So let's do a, uh, we'll just do a slider. Okay. So if I want to build a calendar, in a calendar, what goes left to right in a calendar? What part of the day? Or what part of the date? Mm -hmm. Any guesses? Left to right in a calendar. If I look at a calendar, the weekday. The weekday, right. So if I, <laughs> if I right click and drag my order dates to the column shelf, I can pick weekday as an option. And how about going down the left hand side? What goes down the left? Week number. The week number, right. So again, I can take order date and put that in the rows. And this time I want to look at the week number. And then what? What actually goes in each box? The day, right. So one more time, we'll right click and drag that to the text shelf this time. And let's just pick the day number. So now we've built a basic calendar, right? So let me make this fit entire view. And now I could say I want to look at my profit for each day as a heat map. So I'm going to drag profit to the color, change my mark type to a square, and now I've got a nice little calendar. So my lab I would put my labels kind of, you know, most calendars have the number on the upper left, something like that, maybe 12 point. And you've got a nice little calendar. You could even split it up with nice little borders. And then I would go ahead and hide that header. So now you have a nice little calendar to use, you know, and you can scroll through the dates. Now you will see some months, uh, probably in here somewhere, right here, Saturday the 26th is blank. That's because there were no sales on that day. So you know you can't really account for that, but um, yeah, I love I love calendars. These are really nice to put on dashboards. Maybe just kind of on the side as a little square. Yeah, they're they're really really handy that way. And I think this is the I've got two more. Um, so when we typically create a bar chart, we drag something to the row shelf, and then we drag something else. We drag a measure to the columns, and we sort it like that, right? But you see how we have an axis here. So if I right click, it says edit axis. Let's say I want to have a bar chart with no axis. Well, I could hide it, right? But the axis is still there because my field is up here on the columns. So to create an, a bar chart with no axis, all I have to do is put sales onto the size shelf instead, and then make my mark type a bar, fit entire view, and now I have a bar chart with no axis. Pretty cool. Yeah. Did you know that one, Lily? You did not. I did not. <laughs> And the last one, last one I'll show you is a bikini chart. Um, it's usually it's called like a population pyramid, but a bikini sounds better. Um, so I'm going to go back to my world <coughs> indicators and let's again filter down to just one year for simplicity. And let's say we want to look at maybe male versus female. Uh, we don't have male versus. Let's look at life expectancy again. So I'm going to put um, females. Or let me go back here. I want to put my countries down the rows. And I want to have life expectancy for females on the columns, similar to what we did with the barbell. I'm going to put males, and I'm going to drop it on top of this axis to give me a combined axis. And I'm going to move measure names to color. OK, but now they're piled on top of each other. Do you want males to go to the left, or do you want females to go to the left? Females to the left. Of course, the men say females to the left. Do the women say males to the left? Yeah, so let's do males to the left then, because you said that. So um, if I look here, uh, so this was, oh wait, did I use the wrong, which field is which? So this one is, so the blue is, okay, well, whichever one it is here. So all I need to do is I'm just going to double click in one of these fields here. This is female, and I'm just going to stick a minus sign in front of it, all right, and watch what happens. I now get a nice little diverging bar chart. But see how my scale is messed up. So see how these say minus down the bottom, the values are all negatives. All I have to do is just format that. So I'm going to right click on my measure values and choose format. And under my default options, I can go down here to number custom. And you'll see how they're still negatives. But now if I go to my custom option on this screen here, all I have to do is go into this little box and get rid of that minus sign. And now they're both positives in each direction. And there you go. That's a nice little bikini chart. So this might be better if we actually did it. Let's pick a country. Let's pick Italy, because that's where we are. Uh, so if we do Italy, where's Italy? 
course, I went too far. Where the heck is it? I'm gone. There it is. Okay. It, it must have been like right in between. So let's choose Italy, and instead of country, I want to do it by year. And now if I make these bars, you can kind of see a population pyramid for Italy, something like that. Now if you had more years, it would look a bit more interesting. You could then even just make it an area chart, and you could see the distribution, something like that. And how does it resemble a bikini? Well, if you had a lot more years, it would look more like a bikini, especially if you turn it upside down. So if I do like, oops, if I make this continuous, it'll flip the years. And then you can picture it going down more into a triangle, and it looks more like a bikini. It's a cleavage chart than a bikini. It's a what? A cleavage chart. A cleavage chart. chart. No, it's a bikini. It looks like a bikini because it turns into a V. Of course. Uh, my imagination. Yeah, yeah, you have to use your imagination for that. Okay. All right, so actually, we could, we could probably, no, we can't do it with global warming, but anyway. All right, so that's all I have. What about waterfall? No, nah, I don't want to do that. It's too confusing. <laughs> I hate those anyway. So, I know that's a lot to take in. We'll, I'll publish this up to Tableau Public, and then David can share the workbook, the link out for you guys, so you have all these examples. So that was, how many did we do? It was under an hour, 50 minutes to do... <coughs> 41 charts, so I think that's pretty good. Um, okay, so do we want to take a break before we start? Yes, yes. Okay, so one more. Yes.